I touch the basketball every time down the court, and y'all are going to learn what it's like to play with Kobe F and Bean Bryant. All-time leader off the bench and points scored. The best in the history of the game. Lou is legendary. What's up, y'all? Welcome to What You Doing. I'm Roz Golden Woodie. I'm here with Lou Williams of the Clippers. What's up, Lou? What you doing? How you doing today? I'm well, man. I can't believe the background behind you. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm actually in um in one of, in, in a lounge in my house, and um, I had um, an ta- uh, amazing talent. Um, got named by he goes by the name of uh, Ink by Cali out in Atlanta. Yeah, so we got um this is one of the famous pictures of uh, that I was seeing floating around. Uh, social media um, after the tragic accident of uh, Kobe sitting down and and, um, and Gigi standing up over him. Um, one of his young pictures where he was like a rookie. Uh, you see it, it, so it covers the whole wall. I don't know if I'm giving it wow. justice or whatever. Wow! But you know, it covers up it covers up the entirety of the wall. So I mean, I can see it every time you walk in and see that picture of of Kobe and Gigi on your wall. What does that bring out of you? Uh, it just it just brings back fond memories, you know. I, um, you know, obviously Gigi was a she was a child. I didn't really have a relationship with her, um, um, but as far as uh, twenty four goes, you know, he and I were teammates, and uh, we established a friendship and a bond just by by working together and playing together. And um, uh, it just means a lot, you know, for him to for you know him to be memorialized in my house and you know have an opportunity to do that for for both. For um, you know, both of them. So. Give me one memory, one one that stands out for you about Kobe. Competitively, Kobe was just he was different. You know, sometimes he would say things and we kind of look at him crazy, and he meant exactly what he said. A distinct memory I have once was we were in Denver, and Will Barton was going crazy. I think Will probably had like twenty five at halftime. Coach Scott came in and he said uh, we were making adjustments to Will and. Uh, we were changing our coverage. And Cope said, I'm gonna guard him second half, don't worry about it. And everybody kind of looked at him. And he's and Byron was gonna keep talking and Cope said, no, like, don't worry about him. I'll take care of it. Like he won't even exist in the second half. And we're thinking to ourselves, like, this dude is cooking. Like, nobody's gonna stop him at this point. You know, he already has 25 and a half. You know, his uh, his confidence is sky high. Cole went out and guarded him that second half and Will Barton had two points the second half. And when he put his mind to something, he meant it and he was gonna get it, he was gonna get it done, you know, one way or another. And that was Cole. Did Kobe say anything to you guys during that second half when he was locking up? No, he was locked in. It was okay. like it's Kobe Bryant. So it's not like a I told you so thing, you know. I think one of Kobe's biggest competitors was was himself. You know, I don't. I don't really think that he looked at other guys when he's inside of the lines when he's playing and thinking that I'm in competition with this guy. I, I always felt like, you know, no matter what, he felt like he had a chance to win the basketball game or accomplish whatever he put his mind to inside the line. So he didn't have to say anything. He, he did all the talking with his action. He was a heck heck of a competitor, and you know, he was dead serious about winning and competing. And um, if you weren't on his level of thinking, if you weren't on his level competitively. He was gonna let you know know about yourself. So I enjoy those stories. You know what I mean? Tell me one of those. We were in Portland um, and we got blew out. He wasn't very happy about us getting blown out. He said, from now on out, every trip down the court, I touch the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> he told the whole team this. He's I touch the basketball every time down the court. And y'all are gonna learn what it's like to play with Kobe F and Bean Bryant. And it with a straight with a straight look on his face, he wasn't joking. From now on out, the rest of the season, I touched the ball every time down the court. One last Kobe memory. Um, you were there for his final game. Absolutely. What What do you remember? What stands out from that day, that game? What stands out was the mix between I'm gonna win this basketball game, and he was really on top of the world. He was having a ball. You can you can see it him winking at his family, um, him interacting with his family and his friends. Um, you know, this one game, you know, if you play for the Lakers, you know, they have this thing called Celebrity Row. Um, well, we had Celebrity Arena that night, you know. <laughs> Everybody was there. You know, you had Kanye West and Jay-Z and all of these guys, you know, some of these celebrities were sitting in regular seats. You know, this was a this was a must-see game. And he went out there and put 60 on the board and 
you know, and, and it was a comeback win. I feel like your career just revived. I don't see no end in sight. Like if you could, when, how many years, if you could say like, do you still feel like you'll be playing? I still feel like I got a good four more years left, like high level, like, like, like I got four high level years left. And then after that, um, you know, we'll see what the future holds. You know, in five years, that'll be year 20 for me. So, you know, father time is undefeated. As, as, as young as I look, as, as long as I've been around and all the low mileage, at, at some point, you know, it's, it's time to move on and see what, what the rest of your life has in store. But um, yeah, I feel like I got four more good ones left. Well, let's talk about that Clippers family then. I mean, how are you guys staying in contact during this time? It's interesting because of our group, we've, we've always, uh, We've always communicated every day, regardless. That's just how this group was built. Despite all of the chemistry stuff, like people were talking, we kind of enjoyed it. You know, we enjoyed that people kind of had us pegged wrong. So who's going to shoot the ball at the end of the game? They barely talk to each other. They don't yada, 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 yada. And we would listen to that stuff and we would laugh. You know, we're one of a few teams that have a realistic chance of, of winning the trophy. You know, it's probably four teams out there that, you know, go to sleep at night and really feel like, they have an opportunity to hoist that trophy when this is all said and done. And we were one of those teams. And so um, that was our motivation um, this season, opposed to what people were talking about. Back to your question, nothing has changed. We communicate every day. Um, we put our workout videos in our group chats and kind of push each other. You know, we'll, one guy show, you know, Pat Bev will show us doing his push ups. I'll send in clips of, of me sprinting, you know, the, the few guys that have access to basketball goals to show them shooting. and and things of that nature. And we just communicate every day, making sure everybody's good. So um, that's how we've been doing it. So these are legit, serious workout videos. Each person, it's not jokes. It's like people are really trying to show how hard they're working. Do we, do we strike you as a, as a, as a fun loving joking team? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look at the personalities on our group. Well, we, I mean, we're nice guys, but if you look at our personalities, you know, we're dead serious competitors. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. we're competitive people, you know, and so, if you're trying to win a championship, you don't want to be the guy that's lacking. You know what I mean? I bet Pat Bev's videos are serious. All the time, you know, all the time. And so you don't want to be the guy that looks like you're not the one that's that's working and staying ready, you know? And so that's that's our makeup, that's our group. You know, I got to ask, what's Kawhi's contribution to the group chat? <laughs> uh, he talks. You know what, Kawhi talks the most in our group chat, believe it or not. You know, he's a, he's. A, the dude is a leader, man. I don't I don't know where he got pegged as this guy that doesn't talk or whatever. I think he's trolling a little bit uh, <laughs> when he does that, but the dude is a leader. You know, he leads by example. He's he's active in the group chat. He's active with his workout stuff and you know, and everybody communicate. I spoke to him um spoke to him yesterday and we just um just bounced some things off of each other, seeing how his family was doing, how I was doing, and how we were keeping in shape and, and things of that nature, you know. So he's he's very active. I'm absolutely aware of, of that side of Kawhi. I heard it with the Raptors. I'm not surprised to hear it now with the Clippers. You know, what's something he says? He's hilarious. <laughs> he's just he's he's just hilarious, man. And um, it's just been a joy working with him this year and, and getting to know him. And I hate that this thing happened when it did because I felt like we were turning that corner. Like, you know, we had 20 games left and we were pretty confident in, in the direction we were heading and the chemistry that we were building and, and starting to turn that corner. And so, um, I'm just I'm just sad that this is all going on, but you know sometimes it takes things like this for everybody to take a step back and, and understand what's most important. How much did you feel things were clicking at the point when when this the season was postponed? We felt good. Uh, we felt good. Our confidence was sky high. You know, uh, we were keeping our poker face on, and we wanted people to keep thinking that we were we were still trying to figure it out. But internally, we felt really good about the direction that we were heading in and um, and going into going into the end of March and, and wrapping the season up, going into the playoffs, we felt really good. And so yeah. uh, it's unfortunate that the fans kind of got cheated out of that experience. Um, obviously because of, you know, the the, um, the year that the Lakers have put together and, and you've seen the potential that they have and um, the team that we've been able to build and the year that we've had. And then um, Milwaukee being on a historic run, Toronto still being in the, in the mix and, and Philly going through some injuries, you know, it was it was shaping up for um, a pretty entertaining playoff series. And so I don't think it'll ever be the same just based on, even if we do come back, uh, you know, I don't think the fans will be there and um, everything. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's, it's a black eye right now. But again, you know, you, you deal with all of that adversity and at the same time, 
you step back and there's some guys in this league um, where basketball is probably the last thing they're thinking about. You know, they have some real issues that's going on. And so um, you pray for those guys, you rally around those guys. And, you know, the NBA family, we are, we are a, a tight group. Um, we're a big family. And so, um, you know, you just got to take a step back and just deal with what's most important. Would there be an asterisk next to that championship for whoever won it? it depends. If I win it, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> championship counts. <laughs> you know, it depends. You know, if you win it, it, it counts. You know, <laughs> now, if somebody else win it, we might we might have something to say. So for real, but outside, I remember all the talk coming into All Star Break. Do the Clippers are they together? You know, have they figured it out? They don't practice. They don't. You know, nobody's seen them all on the court together. But out of the All Star Break, you guys were really starting to put something nice together. Let's let's be honest. How'd you feel about your championship chances right at that point? Yeah, again, um, we felt like we were turning the corner. Um, you know, they were like little holidays. When we were coming to shoot around and everybody was participating in shoot around, those were the games where we were kind of like, it's all on the night. Like, we gonna beat the hell out of somebody. You know? <laughs> it doesn't matter who. Like, our confidence is sky high. And so we weren't really worried. You know, we were, we were more so concerned. Only thing we were concerned about was just making sure everybody stayed healthy. Other than that, we knew fully loaded what type of team we were, and it was starting to show. Y'all gonna be nice for a while. like. But windows are real, moments are real. You know, people want to get paid. Free agency is going to be real. Like, this was a moment this season. Absolutely. What, what if Trez doesn't come back or something like that? And, and I'm asking you because you but, two together, you know, are so special. I feel like we'll continue to be great together. Um, obviously, business is business. And, you know, Trez has a family to take care of, one, two. Um, this is his career. This is his opportunity to to put himself in a in a great position financially, and and in his career, he'll find somewhere that you know he gets he gets his just due. He gets the money that he deserves, and he gets to be an opportunity um, that he deserves. And I really hope that we're going to be that opportunity for him, um, where we continue to build and grow and, and move forward together. So um, this is all weird. This is all yeah. um, a different scenario, but. I feel, I feel very confident that we'll be able to keep this group together. Lou, this season is weird. I'm not sure how it's going to finish out, but you have won the sixth man of the year the last two years in a row and might have been on the way to a three-peat. Like, first of all, did you feel you were going to three-peat on the sixth man of the year award this year? I thought we were going to make history. I honestly thought um, this year Trez and I were going to be co-sixth man of the year. I felt like that was, the, that was probably going to be the most appropriate thing. Um, a lot of my success is hinged on the things that he do. Um, and a lot of his success is hinged on what I do. You know, our numbers are basically identical as far as our positions go. You know, I'm not going to rebound as well as he's going to rebound. He's not going to pass the ball as well as I'm going to pass the ball. Um, we were averaging basically the same in points. You know, he was at 18.6, I was at 18.7. Um, and so I just felt like this was going to be the year where, you know, we make so much history together. Uh, my names are synonymous with each other. I thought this year we were going to be able to celebrate together. Um, and so that's how I want it to work. Um, I also accept him winning it or me winning it. But um, ideally, I wanted to be a co for us this year. All right, moving through your career journey real quick. Um, well, you've been a lot of places. Yeah. Um, first been, of all, go ahead. I've been in all great cities. So I'm, <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah, so you started your career straight out of high school, by the way. Yeah. In Philly with the 76ers for a minute. You were there a minute, 05 to 12. Then you went to the Atlanta Hawks from 12 to 14. Then you went to the Toronto Raptors, 14, 15. You were with the Lakers from 15, 17, 2015, 2017. You had a moment with the Rockets. Right. And then now you with the Clippers. Do you think that you could name a lesson learned at each stop? For sure. Start with the 76ers. Um, I think I think I think management gave up too early on that group. Um, I think we should have stayed together longer. What I think my last year, uh, we took Boston to seven games in, in round two, and we were eight seed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we ended up um, beating a, 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 a number one Bulls team that year. Then you take um, the Boston Celtics with the big three. You take them to seven games and. Um, and then you break that team up that summer. I thought the lesson learned then is we should have kept we should have kept that group together a little longer. You know, we we were a really talented young team. We were stacked. 
Now the 2012-2014 Atlanta Hawks that you were with. I probably shouldn't have went home. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't myself. I should have. Um, I had learned that I, I thrive in in, uh, in environments that I'm not very comfortable. Um, and I was too comfortable at home. You know, we would lose a game, I would go home and be with my family and friends. I didn't have that environment where I was able to lock myself in a room or or be away from everything, be away from all the distractions and, and stay locked in on getting ready for the next game. I don't I don't I think I lost some of my edge in Atlanta. Well then the next step of your career was the 1415 Toronto Raptors. 2014 and 2015 you spent in Toronto. I don't know if I have a I don't know if I have a lesson there. I'm forever grateful for that season. I think that's the season that rejuvenated my career. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to spend it with with some guys that I, I, I deeply care about, Kyle Lowry, Amir Johnson, Chuck Hayes, James Johnson, DeMar DeRozan, um, Grievous Vasquez, Pat Patterson, um, um, Valanchunez, like these guys really embraced me. They knew I was at a point in my career where it was, it was make or break um, coming off an of ACL tear. And those guys really rallied around me and um, I was able to win my first six man of the year with that group. So my my I, I wouldn't have a lesson for Toronto. I, I'm just grateful for everything that that one season did for me. Let's move along to the 15, 2015 to 2017, the time you spent with the Lakers. My lesson would be just uh, just be a pro. It was so so many different unique circumstances um, around my time with the Lakers that um, I just knew I no matter what was going on, whether we were grooming young guys or or what we were catering to Kobe on his last stop somewhere, just be a pro and just be ready to play. It sounds like it was a lot more than basketball going on. It was a, a lot more than basketball going on. It's just, you know, it's the Lakers. You know, we're part of the makeup in Hollywood. So, you know, what's a Lakers team without a good story? All right, well, moving along to the year you spent with the Rockets in 2017 or like... Does that count? It's a moment. It was like a moment with the Rockets. I don't know. Yeah, I was there three months. I, I mean... Um, shout out to Houston though. The Houston, um, the city embraced me. I wish I could have stayed there longer. That step of your journey then led you to the LA Clippers, where you've yeah. been since 2017. And this is still happening right now, but is there something? Never give up. That's my Clippers, that's my Clippers story. Never give up. I was at a I was at a place in my career where I thought I was done. And 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 Doc and the rest of the guys rejuvenated, rejuvenated me again and gave me that you know, that, 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 that confidence that I needed um, to move forward in my career. And I've had the best years of my career um, with the Clippers. So never give up on yourself, continue to strive. That will be my lesson for, for this, this last phase. Cause this is it, <laughs> this is it. I'm not, listen, all teams out there, I'm not playing for anybody else after this, so. You said there might be four more great years. You, they're all gonna have with the Clippers then, they got to? This is it, you know, um, that's, that's, that's my leverage. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I hope I hope Doc L and Steve are listening. You know, this is this is my last stop. Uh, I identify with this group of guys. I identify with this organization. I don't see me finding that um, somewhere else. Lou, what does underground goat mean? Yeah, just basically, I'm your favorite player's favorite player. You have so many guys that um, the world look up to and that they respect and that they revere. You know, your Kevin Durant's, your LeBron's, your, your Giannis's. And then you have guys that they respect. I'm one of those guys. Give me Lou Will's list of guys who are comfortable in their own skin. Cool NBA players who are comfortable in their own skin. Pat, Kawhi, Cole, Drew. Can I suggest Allen Iverson or no? Allen Iverson was definitely comfortable in his own skin. <laughs> You know what? He was so comfortable in his own skin that he made us comfortable in our skin. He he made it he made it okay for other guys to be themselves, to to show their tattoos, to to um, to expose things that they did off the court. You know, whether it was music or some guys are in the film and uh, video games and, and these things. I think Allen Iverson was very very instrumental in where you see the game today. You know, he makes it possible for guys to. Um, play video games on ESPN competitively. You know, he he made it, you know, like when he had tattoos, he was the, he was the, like the minority with tattoos. Now, if you don't have tattoos, you're in the minority, you know, he's, he's, 
he's definitely a trailblazer. I appreciate that because that would have slipped my mind. And he's like the the ultimate comfortable in his skin guy. So that would be my that would be my list of guys. Respect. That was your that was your OG and vet, right? That was my vet. Good and bad. That was my guy. <laughs> what was the good? What was the bad? This ain't no real game, man. What? I ain't never seen you score in no real game. Go get taught. Uh, the bad was I had to decide at a very young age, when I was 18 and 19 years old, some of the things that he did, I had to realize that that might have worked for him and didn't work for me. Uh, so, like, what? like what? You know, it's it's documented that he liked to gamble and party a little bit. Um, and, you know, the next night he would go out and give guys 40. You know, that was something that he was able to, to do in his career. Um, I, me, not so much. I've had some moments where I've, I've been able to do my thing and, you know, you go to some cities and you kind of get carried away the night before the game and, you know, you survive the game and you go out and do something special. He did it on a consistent basis for years. <laughs> that was the bad. The good was throughout the hundreds of injuries that he had, throughout all the criticism and the adversity that he had, we always could depend on him that he was going to compete at a high level mm -hmm. when he put his jersey on. You know, and that was the, that was the good and the bad. I know I hear a lot of stories about their rookies and their vets, and a lot of them come with generosity. I've heard stories of vets getting rookies a suit, like a nice suit, because they never had one before. Right. Like, did did AI ever do something like that for you? Okay, so here's the so here's the thing. I had AI, I had Kevin Ali and Chris Webber all on the same team. Mm -hmm. So AI would do something, and then KO would say. Me and you, we don't do that. He's he's different. <laughs> We're not different. We gotta work. This uh -huh. guy highly talented. Young fella, we gotta work. And Chris was more, Chris was the suit guy. Okay. So Chris made sure all the rookies and everybody had suits and the things to be a pro. KO made sure every every young guy worked like a pro. Mm -hmm. And AI was the cool big brother that you just wanted to be around every day. And because he always had something interesting going on. So I had a I had a great mix of, of, of bits. All right, last AI question. Can you remember the first time you met him? First time I met AI, I was um at the Charlie Mack celebrity basketball game the summer after I had got drafted. They had invited me up to come play in the game after I was drafted to kind of introduce me to the city. And so um we're at Temple University in Philly and, you know, everybody's sitting around and kind of waiting for the game to start and they're playing music and stuff. And, you know, it's just a little vibe in the air. And then all of a sudden you just see this rush of people walking in the gym. And just, yeah, you see this rush of people walking the gym and it's like a buzz. And then everybody started going crazy. It's like, who is it? You know, it's somebody. And then it's like the group just parted out the way and AI walks in. And I just remember, holy <laughs> Did my heart stopped like, I was like, it's him. I had never met him before. This is my idol. This dude is the reason that I have tattoos. I based a lot of my game around how he played, my toughness, everything. I just took it from him. And I was kind of worried because, you know, it's a lot of times, you know, people that you look up to, they let you down um, when you meet them. You know what I mean? And so I was just like, all right, well, here goes nothing. I locked eyes with this guy. And he literally beelined and walked straight towards me. Wow. And he walked across the court and gave me like this huge bear hug. And was like, man, welcome. Love your game, man. Take my number down if you need anything. I'm around. And from that day on, he's been he's been big bro. So that was the first time I met him. Amazing. I'm so glad that he lived up to all of the the momentum, the, the hype, the thoughts that you thought he would be, that he was in that moment. Because I've had, I've had some guys that let me down <laughs> that same year when I started getting introduced to um, the lifestyle of the NBA and things of that nature. You know, everybody wasn't, everybody wasn't so welcoming, you know? So I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful that the one guy that I looked up to um, mm -hmm. lived up to the hype for me. All right, Lou, you are finishing the show. Every show I finish with a challenge. All right. So um, your challenge 
is a one gotta go challenge. One gotta go. Yes. I have a problem with that. I'm gonna list three things and you gotta say one gotta go. Which one gotta go? All right, I'm cool with that. All right, here we go. Hoopers who are rappers. Right. And I'm not gonna include your name. Damian Lillard, Lonzo Ball, or Iman Shumpert. One gotta go. Lonzo Ball gotta go. This next one, I, I had to poll your friends because I know you a chicken wings guy. <laughs> my wings. I know you love wings. So I'm, I actually, I'm actually going meatless this week. Why are you gonna mess up the game, Lou? Come on, man. <laughs> but no, I, listen, back Monday, I'll be right back to my chicken. But that's how much time I have on my hands. I'm just trying things. <laughs> You trying to you becoming a vegetarian, a vegan? I just want to see. I just want to see if I can even. It's not even for my health. I just want to see if I can do it. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> you bored? Bored. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Well, in your former chicken eating days, which was a week ago. Um, yesterday, I started. It was, I started yesterday. <laughs> day two. All right. So day two before two days ago. I had to pull your friends for your favorite chicken wing spots. So one gotta go. Mm -hmm. Amer American Deli. Thanks. Chang's Wings from Memphis. Or Magic City Wings. Ah, uh, no, you didn't do that. One gotta go. American Deli. All right. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it, but American Deli gotta go. <laughs> okay. Magic City is my favorite restaurant in the world. <laughs> I didn't know they even have food like that, but okay. <laughs> Listen, so all the time to shut down in Atlanta, the, the the restaurant is still open. You can still go to Magic and get get your food. It's essential. It's an essential. It's a part of our culture here. Respect, nothing but respect for culture at all times. <laughs> the culture. <laughs> Chicken spots in general. One gotta go. Popeyes, Chick-fil-A, or Zaxby's? Man. <laughs> It's tough. That's tough. Chick fil A. Wow. Really? Okay. I'd let I'd let Zaxby's go or something. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm raised on Zaxby's. <laughs> you go. Classic shows. Martin, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or Family Matters. Family Matters. Out. That was a classic. What you mean? We watch Steve Urkel every every night. But you're saying, you're comparing it to two other classics. All right, fine. This is your game, not mine. My bad. Yeah, okay. So family Matters go. <laughs> family Matters gotta go. Comedians, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, or Cat Williams? You know, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one. I can't even do it. One gotta go, Lou. One gotta go. Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, or Cat Williams? Listen, I, I I can just listen to Ka uh, Dave Chappelle talk. Like he don't even <laughs> tell jokes. I can just listen to him talk. And Eddie Murphy has some of my favorite movies of all time under his belt. Um, so I'm gonna say Cat Williams is out. Cat Williams gotta go. One gotta go, rappers. Jay-Z, Andre 3000, or Drake? Drake will probably say Drake. Like, out of respect? Out of respect. Lou, what do you say? One gotta go. Drake is out. <laughs> Drake <laughs> has to go. Opposed to Andre 3000, I'm from Atlanta, and Jay-Z is Jay-Z. So if you if you pose the same question to Drake, I'm sure he'd say Drake is out. These questions are hard. That's why the game is hard. All right, I'm gonna move on to singer catalog. Catalog. Um, catalogs, okay. Mariah Carey, Beyonce, or Rihanna? Rihanna's out. Okay. I don't listen to any of them, but um, just Mariah Carey has had a Christmas song that's the Christmas song. Mm -hmm. And Beyonce is Beyonce and Rihanna is Rihanna. So there's not a lesser of the three, but if I had to say one, I'm gonna say Rihanna. Hoop Dynasty, one gotta go. The 96, 98 Bulls, yeah. the 2015, 2018 Warriors, or the 1988, 1990 Bad Boy Pistons. One gotta 
Pistons gotta go. Last two here. NBA fashion. Allen Iverson, Russell Westbrook, or Kelly Oubre Jr. One gotta go. Kelly gotta go. <laughs> Why are you roll your eyes? <laughs> it was actually for me when I was making this list, I was thinking Allen Iverson, Westbrook, or Kuz. But then I was like, I felt like- Kuz gotta go to. Kuz, <laughs> Kuz going to. <laughs> Who's wore a purse? I, it, I hope his vets in his locker room told him that ain't it. All right, this last one I don't know if you're gonna be able to answer, um, but I do know you have a you have a girlfriend, so maybe you watch shows, maybe you watch it with your teammates. Who knows? Okay. Reality love shows. Ninety Day Fiance, Love Is Blind. Never seen it. Or Love and Hip Hop. Love and hip hop gotta go. That's the only one you've seen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke, yeah. thank you for playing the one gotta go challenge and thank you for joining What You Doing. I this appreciate is, you having me. This has been one of my favorite interviews ever of all time. Like you uh, Well, listen, I appreciate it. It's it's kind of, it's uh, I'm comfortable. I'm in my home so I can be a little bit more candid. You know yeah. what I mean? Maybe this should be the format moving forward for everybody instead of five minutes after we leave practice and we trying to scramble up our thoughts, you know, give somebody an opportunity to build, build some intelligent job thoughts and you might get the best interview. So. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.